Rotted Reviews, and it is day four of October, Patron Appreciation Month. There are a select few individuals out there that lack the sense or sanity that uh, they weren't satisfying just subscribing to the channel, and instead they went ahead and clicked that Patreon link. For those folks, I wanted to give a little bit of a special thank you, and I queried them for movies that they wanted me to review, and that is what this month is all about, thanking them for supporting me just that little bit extra. And today's selection is the 1980 movie, The Watcher in the Woods, brought to us by patron Jackie. Thank you, Jackie, for all your support. This one's for you. So I had never seen this movie before, and I found it to be a very interesting, very captivating, very thoughtful piece. And it really raised a big question for me, and that is, is there really a place for movies like this anymore? For those of us that are old enough to remember, Disney made a lot of live action movies for families back in the day. And they kind of had a broad range of different styles, different themes and so forth. And, uh, well, they really don't largely talk about them anymore. They'll remake them to the cows come home, but they don't really give a lot of credence or attribution or a lot of airtime even to a lot of their archived live action movies. A lot of people are kind of hoping and banking on Disney Plus bringing them out of the shadows, but time will tell. But of these, even though they had a very broad range of genres and broad range of themes, there was a few common elements, and I think one of those is entertainment for the whole family. Disney wasn't satisfied just putting out some cookie cutter just for kids stuff. They wanted to entertain everybody in the family, kids and parents alike. So it may not have any swearing. It may not have a whole lot of violence. It may not have any gore whatsoever, but it still does prove to be a little bit challenging. We have movies like Old Yeller and yeah, that gets pretty morally and ethically and uh, emotionally challenging. But beyond that, kind of bringing the reins back around to the horror front, we have movies that have been a little bit challenging in these scares as well. To a slightly lighter degree, we had The Fair of 1976 with The Treasure of the Matacumbe. We had in 1959 the movie Darby O'Gill and the Little People. And that was one that when I watched that as a kid... Uh, just scared the pants off of me. It has a very uh, interesting, lighthearted, family-friendly storyline, but it brings in elements with banshees and death carriages that really were very challenging and very frightening. <laughs> Not to mention, it has just a sexy as all get out young Sean Connery starring in it. Maybe you'd care to go, Mr. McBride. No, not yet, thank you. And uh, by the way, my name is Michael. And then we had the 1980 movie, The Watcher in the Woods, that was adapted from the 1976 novel by Florence Engel Randall of the same name. And I think this one, above more than the others that I presented here, really was more true horror. It was juvenile horror. It was Walt Disney family-friendly safe horror, but it was horror. So in this movie, we're introduced to the characters of Paul and Helen Curtis as they're taking their two daughters, Jan and Ellie, out to the remote countryside to find a house to live in. And sure enough, they happen across a countryside estate that almost seems too good to be true for the price, but there is a little bit of a catch. They have to meet with the current homeowner who lives in a little cottage just to the side of the property, and she has to vet them, and she has not accepted anybody thus far. And this is Mrs. Aylwood, played by the iconic Betty Davis. And by all rights, it looks like Mrs. Aylwood is not going to accept them. She's not going to do this, but she meets one-on-one -on -one with Jan, the oldest daughter, and after just talking with her for a little bit, decides to go ahead and just give them a shot. She clearly sees something in Jan, and it gets brought out in some questioning about you seem to sense things, don't you, Jan? You're kind of sensitive about particular things. You may notice things that other people don't. Now, why this is of any interest to Mrs. Aylwood? Well, that remains to be seen. That's part of the mystery of The Watcher in the Woods. Soon, Jan does start to notice some odd things going on. Some weird events start happening. And Ellie is starting to become affected by, well... We're not sure yet, but that's the mystery of the movie. Now, again, I do want to make absolutely perfectly clear here that I really did enjoy this movie, but I also do question whether or not there is a place for films such as this anymore. You see, this really is family friendly. There is no swearing to be had. There's very little violence. There's uh, 
very little in the way of any kind of scares or horror go uh, elements going on, even though this is a mystery that is based on potentially ghosts and death and so on and so forth. So it fits the horror theme. But we're talking about a 1980s movie that has the sensibility of a 1940s movie. It's quiet. It's charming. It's very character and dialogue driven. And I don't know what family would really sit down and enjoy that these days. That's not really a criticism of the movie. It's almost more of a criticism of society. But I really don't want to get on that soapbox too awful hard. I'm just kind of thinking out loud at this point whether or not we have the capability of sitting down as a family unit to a quiet, calm, hour and a half long movie as a family. I dare say that for younger audiences, even the target age bracket audiences when this movie first came out, I think that this would just be too boring of a watch. But then the older audiences that are looking for a really good ghost story movie might find this to be, well, just a little bit benign and innocent. And there also is a little bit of an elephant in the room about this one, and that comes down to the ending. If you actually look at the writing credits on this film, it's pretty long. And the reason for that is the ending. They rewrote and reshot the ending so many times trying to find an ending that worked within the context of the storyline, but also fit the family-friendly narrative of the producer and distributor, that it just kind of wound up being in a little bit of a, well, a mess. And I'll get into some spoilers about the ending in a little bit. Right now, I'm kind of dealing with the spoiler-free portion of this. But it really did, uh, I, I don't know, I kind of thought that it did a sufficient job explaining things. Uh, I, I typically try and not view any kind of reviews or message boards or anything along those lines before I see the movie. But once I watch it afterward, sure, I'll go ahead and look it up. And in doing so, I found a lot of people historically were massively confused about the storyline and the ending. Personally, I thought it was, well, a little bit messy, but ultimately pretty straightforward. I think I picked up on everything, but messy really is a bit of a apt word to describe it. And so now I find myself in a little bit of an awkward place because I'm looking at this movie and I'm saying, well, I feel like it's just way too innocent for horror fans that are looking to just be jumping out of their skin with frights and so forth to really enjoy on that level. It's a bit too slow and cantankerous for younger generations to really latch on to. And as far as any kind of uh, writing quality goes, I think that, well, it does kind of devolve into a little bit of a mess. And yet, I still stand here and I say with confidence that I do recommend this movie. Yes, it's a bit slow. Yes, the dialogue is heavy and the characters are very innocent. But it's still a charming, beautiful, little, well sleeper of a Disney film that tried its hand at horror and I honestly kind of wish that it would try again. So maybe it's worth taking a look at some of their older catalog and telling them, use it as a template for the future instead of trying to hide it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and change gears and get into some spoiler talk. So if you haven't seen this movie or if you care about spoilers in the slightest, please stop watching now. For everybody else, I'll be back after this message from a sponsor. This is the Edsel, the car that is all its classic vertical grille implies. Unforgettably original, elegantly styled. And I'm back. And just to kind of cover my butt legally, I want to make sure that it is perfectly clear that that was not a sponsor, that was a joke. Moving on. So I mentioned that this had several different endings written and several en different endings shot. And I want to bring up one of those shots specifically because I did find a YouTube video that had the deleted scene from one of the original endings. And in my opinion, it's the one that should have stayed because not only was it a little bit more clear as to what was going on, when we start to bring in the elements like interdimensional beings, things do tend to get a little bit muffled in the narrative, but actually seeing things is a little bit more of a different story. It just hammers things home. And what a creature design this was. If anybody had any notion that this movie wasn't horror based, that would have been thrown completely out the fucking window with this creature. I couldn't believe what I was watching. It was fantastic. Scary as all get out. This really does bring me back to the 1959 uh, Darby O'Gill and the little people kind of just, just not afraid to scare the shit out of the little kids 
that happen to be sitting down watching this on family movie night. There is a big part of me, and yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a sadistic part of me, that wishes they had kept this and wishes they had just rolled with this one and had this creature in the theatrical release. And ah, that would have just been fantastic. That would have been aces. But they decided to pull back. They decided to go a different direction. And well, even so, I do fully recommend the 1980 movie, The Watcher in the Woods. And I really thank patron Jackie for bringing this to my attention and allowing me to talk about this movie. So thank you again, and thank you for watching this. If you like this movie, please click like and subscribe. And beyond that, remember next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.